feel? I find my voice is sore. And my voice is ready. I just don't feel so good. Oh, that's all. They're going around, you know. Well, what can I do? I feel lousy. Just stay in bed and keep warm. Can Billy come over after school? <coughs> it's not. Why? Why? Well, Shelly's got a cold. And a cold is an example of a communicable disease. Communicable diseases are diseases that pay eventually involve the entire community. Although Shelley's cold may not be serious, there are other communicable diseases which are. In fact, infectious disease has changed the course of history time and time again. Ancient Athens was a powerful city. It fought many wars and won. But communicable disease struck. Thousands died, and the remaining people panicked and rioted. Eventually, the city was at the mercy of its enemies. Athens produced a culture on which our culture is based, and ideas which are a part of our lives. But the Athenians didn't understand disease, so they were helpless before it. Later, a far more powerful state, the Roman Empire, collapsed for mysterious reasons. A curious lack of energy and decay seemed to set in. Some thought it was the result of loose morals and high living. Yet, it's likely that disease was also a factor, mainly malaria and typhoid, both communicable diseases. Communicable diseases can lie quiet for decades or travel with astonishing speed. In the Middle Ages, Europe was ravaged by the bubonic plague, the Black Death. Whole villages disappeared. Governments collapsed. Again, men were baffled and helpless. As the years passed, disease became better understood but epidemics still caused enormous misery and death. At the beginning of this century, immigrants came to America in search of a better... But many had communicable diseases such as tuberculosis. Health officials, realizing the danger, would not allow those infected to enter the country. They were forced to return to their native lands. Terrible disease on a wide scale is not just something that happened long ago. Until recently, polio was a common menace, particularly in summer. Children were warned to keep in public places like movie theaters and swimming pools. Summers were not completely free from worry until 1955, when Dr. Jonas Salk the first polio vaccine. All communicable diseases are caused by germs. Bacteria, viruses, all plants and animals. Because all these living things can be seen only under a microscope, a general term used when discussing them is microbes. If you ever really got a microscopic look at yourself, you might be surprised you'd see a living forest of microbes covering your entire body. These microbes are with us all the time and cover almost everything. Most of the microbes around us don't cause problems, but there are certain kinds called pathogens which can cause very serious disease. Even though microbes are all around us, there are very few that are actually inside our body. Medical scientists say that nothing is inside us until it passes into our bloodstream. 
through the stomach walls or through the lungs or a break in the skin. This brings us to our next point. How does infection enter the body? Which dress did uh, Michelle make? Michelle didn't make it. One of the most common ways infection is spread is through inhalation, simple breathing. Well, she said... They really took a lot of work. Thank you. The common cold, measles, mumps, tuberculosis, and influenza can be spread in this manner. That's why it's a good idea to cover up when you sneeze or cough. Try to eating your apple. I just want to wash it. Oh, come on, Kathy. I just bought it at the market. It's perfectly all right. So that doesn't mean it's clean. Look, I'll be your official taster here. Give me your apple. What's a gland dysfunction? The second way infection can enter your body is through ingestion, well, eating or swallowing something. Really Contaminated water or infected know, food but. can carry typhoid, dysentery, no, cholera, no and various right. food poisonings. But it's a good idea to wash food carefully before eating it. Come on, help me with this. Ready, go, set, hike. Come on, hike. You all right? A little cut there. Wow, are you sure you want to wash that off? The third way infection can enter the body is through an abrasion or cut. These breaks in the skin can cause infection by allowing pathogenic microbes to enter directly into the bloodstream. It's a good idea to carefully wash and keep clean any break in the skin. Of course, we can't spend our lives worrying about getting sick, but there are a few things we should be aware of. Hey, what's happening, people? Hey, how's it going? Even though our bodies have certain natural defenses against disease, excessive drinking, smoking, and drug taking all tend to weaken these defenses. For example, smoking has a tendency to destroy the tiny hair-like projections which sweeps foreign matter out of the respiratory tract. Without these, our chances of getting sick are considerably increased. You know, you look like you're feeling too well. It's sometimes hard to know if you're really sick. But if you think you're coming down with something, see a doctor or your school nurse. Oh, sounds to me more like a case of finalitis. <laughs> oh, really? My stomach's really queasy and my head hurts. Oh, I feel really warm. Wow, you're really serious. For sure. No, oh, it's probably just a cold. I wouldn't even worry about it. The common cold is really very complex. There's no single cold germ. Hundreds of different kinds of microbes can cause it. If you have a cold, your resistance to all disease is down. So take care of it before it becomes something more serious. Yeah, well, come on, let's get something to eat. You mm -hmm. Another communicable disease common to young people is mononucleosis, often called the kissing disease. It's believed that the microbes which cause mononucleosis travel from one person to another in saliva, which means in sharing the same glass, a cigarette, or a kiss. Some of the symptoms are swollen glands, a sore throat, and a generally tired throat. Around down the hill about 12 o'clock. I ran that sick, I'll be a cold. I'm going down to the fishing hole. You can go fishing all the time. Have you been a fishing all the time? I'm going fishing too. Yeah, you've been trying to see me. Hey, what's going on? Where you been? Yeah. <laughs> I've been in the bathroom. Is that okay? What you doing in the bathroom? <laughs> I'll give you two guesses. Wash your hands? <laughs> Did I wash my hands? Hey, what you doing after? Since the microbes which cause infectious hepatitis are most common in human excrement or feces, you can see the importance of washing your hands after using the bathroom. Infectious hepatitis should not be confused with serum hepatitis, which can be transmitted by using a dirty hypodermic needle. Come on, 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 push it on over. Come on, a little more. That's it, you got it. Come on, 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 come it's all over your arms. It looks like a rash or something. Maybe I'm allergic to losing. German measles, or rubella, is quite common among young people. Paul's cold is one of the few symptoms of the disease, but a rash usually appears and may last about three days. 
German measles usually aren't serious, but if you have reason to suspect you've got German measles, check with a doctor. Not only can you spread them around to your friends, but if you should somehow pass the disease to a pregnant woman, it could seriously affect her unborn child. <laughs> I might have gonorrhea. What? Yeah. Oh, great. That means I might have gonorrhea also. Yeah, I think you'd better go to a doctor. Look, I'm sorry. Hey, Sheila, what's wrong? Everything. Something with Fred, huh? Hey, come on, it can't be that bad. Today, the chances are one in five that you'll get VD before you get your high school diploma. Yeah. What's wrong, Fred? You look all right to me. Well, I've got all the symptoms. Well, like what? When I go to the bathroom, it, it really hurts. Sounds like gonorrhea. You been to a doctor yet? No, not yet. You better go. It appears as if Fred does have a venereal disease called gonorrhea. The only difference between venereal diseases and other communicable diseases is that they can be transmitted only by intimate sexual contact. It's important to see a doctor as soon as you suspect you may have a venereal disease because it can usually be treated easily and painlessly during the early stages. If the disease contracted was syphilis, Fred may have noticed a sore on his penis. Okay, so what's wrong? Fred said that I should see a doctor. That that I may have VD. Oh, Sheila, you're kidding. Well, how does he know? Well, he thinks he has it. And, well, he said that if I didn't want to go to my family doctor, that I could go to the free clinic or to the public health department. He says they won't necessarily tell my parents. Well, do you feel bad if you notice anything wrong? No. I mean, I feel fine. It doesn't matter that Sheila feels fine because most females don't notice any symptoms at all. Venereal disease can be very serious. Untreated gonorrhea can cause sterility and certain blood infections. Untreated syphilis can result in blindness, heart damage, insanity, and even death. If you have VD or think you may have come in contact with it, seek help. It's just plain foolish not to. One way to protect against some specific diseases is by getting an immunization, an introduction into the body of a killed or inactivated substance to which the body reacts by producing antibodies. These antibodies fight patching it. We are then called immune. Doctors recommend that infants receive a series of immunizations that will protect them against diphtheria, pertussis, and tetanus. In addition, at one year of age, a child should receive immunizations for polio and measles. But people today often forget the lessons of past years and ignore immunizations. They really are a very important part of staying healthy. Even if you didn't get your shots as a child, it's not too late to get them now. Still, the best defense you have against communicable disease is simply to stay healthy. Keep your resistance up. Yeah, I dig. I've been drinking this uh, high-protein drink, and uh, I don't eat anything that's not natural, you know. I'm, uh, I'm really into this health thing. That's all well and good, but staying healthy involves more than a high-protein drink or eating natural foods. It's important that we eat well-balanced meals, get a good night's sleep, find some time for exercise, and keep ourselves clean. In other words, practice sound personal hygiene. You know, we all have a responsibility to ourselves to take care of any illness we may have. But also, we have a responsibility to take care of each other. And that means not spreading disease.